cost us to stop the project now, live in the conditions that we're currently living in, put it out for bid, and start up down the road in another three, four, or five months. So, and what, so, so what's it going to cost us to do that? What we, what we are here, we're, we're between a rock and a hard place is where we are, because there's no good answer for us. No, there there's is, no, you're right. And I'm there's no good option. That, okay? The it's one a, thing, the one thing. situation. But you know what, at what point do we say we got to put a foot down and say this is enough is enough? Well, but the contractor has the same problem, enough is enough. I mean, when are we going to tell him that we can guarantee there won't be delays? We can't ever do that. I'm sure every contractor, Tony included, builds into his bid assumption for some reasonable delays, but this is far beyond any reasonable. usual and customary delay, as he said, that he's ever experienced in all of his years of, of contracting. It's really, really unusual situation. Now, there are some things he's done that are going to help us in the future. Yeah. Why don't we let Mr. Delano speak for himself? Yeah, yeah. That would be a good idea. Oh, yeah. right? now, everybody keeps talking about if you started in November, we wouldn't have these costs. Uh, we have a three-month delay. I was awarded this project verbally, so I had a contract. I wanted to hear because... Can hear you hear me, Anthony? I can hear you, Okay. Uh, I was awarded this contract, even though it was a verbal award. I had an award on, on April 12th, and I started working on this project on April 12th. I, it, I planned on starting the project in June and finishing before the end of the year. That was my game plan. Right. And then we ran into one small project uh, a delay, and then a second project delay, and then a third project delay, and then a fourth project delay. And the, accum the accumulative effect of that is that I was working, trying to do whatever I could do that wasn't delayed, anticipating starting in a week, a week and a half, two weeks, and I never got started because more delays started to come about. And if you remember, I at least three times at board meetings raised the flag about costs after January 1st, in addition to the four letters I wrote, starting in this summer. So, you know, it's not like, and, and as far as nickel and diming, there isn't one extra, except for this 288,000 extra, that I generated. They were all in response to the board requesting, what can we do here? Would you price this? Would you price that? So I, they weren't Delano Construction initiated change orders. They were board initiated change orders. This is the only change order that I initiated after some warning, both in writing and verbally, and we work with the management to try to get that number as low as possible. I'm certainly not happy with this, and I defy any contractor to come in here and tell me that they wouldn't have the same cost. They may not. It, it would probably be higher. Okay, take a breath. You, you know what, Tony? Anthony, 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 let somebody else talk. But you're all right about that, and, and you're right that some of the change was work from us. I have to admit with that, is that you are right that a lot of the delays were on our part. There's no doubt about that, okay? And, uh, and I'm fair that way. I, you know, I could sit here and say, I stick to my guns, but I, I'll agree with you. You are correct about that, okay? Okay, Steve Brayman. Before I raise what I think are some materially different issues about this, <coughs> I don't know necessarily that we've heard everything of those people who are supportive of this. And I think that since this is a motion, we ought to be hearing more of if there is anything more to be heard as to why we ought to go forward with this before additional issues are brought up. Okay. Stephen? <coughs> I've been watching this and listening to these discussions. I notice, <coughs> based on living here seven years, it seems endemic <coughs> to the galaxy that we let a contract and then we have substantial change orders. This is a substantial change order. That said, we've torn up the front. We've entered into the lobbies. Our basic choice now is to tell Tony goodbye. Here's a parting fee which he's going to charge us. Or continue. 
That's it. We can let the lobbies sit the way they are, and you stated this as well earlier tonight, Alan. It's not right to our homeowners to allow Tony to leave, to kick him out, to allow the lobbies to stay the way they are. Who could guarantee that in May we're going to get more permits under a new plan and we're going to get another contractor? The uncertainty is unbelievable. We don't have any choice. <coughs> as unhappy about it as I am, I think we have to go ahead with the lobby program. Mention, and that Steve raised a very good point, is that before we started any of these conversations after Mr. Delano came to us with the request of the change order, is that we asked Bob Buckley to go through our contract with a fine tooth comb and make sure that all of our rights were being um, exercised protected. and protected and that Mr. Delano wasn't violating any of his contractual obligations to the galaxy. He has not. Um, Bob, Buckaloo, and Susan, once that was, that once that conclusion was reached, Bob and Susan then sat with Mr. Delano and went through his requested changes. And I used the term earlier for the fine tooth comb. And Susan and, and Delano, Mr. Delano actually renegotiated the system, number was a much higher number. Um, mostly dealing with the subcontractor part, part of it. Um, Susan and, and Tony actually went out and spoke to every single sub. You got you to gotta do something with that. Thank you. Um, Susan and Mr. Delano went out and renegotiated with every sub. And the portion of the increase that deals with the subcontractor cost, which I think is about forty-five or forty-eight thousand dollars, was that was a much higher number. Um, Tony has gone out and he's rebid and rebid and rebid those subs in order to come down to as low a number as is possible and still deliver the kind of product that we would expect to see as a finished product. If I can put one thing out, it's highly unusual for him to allow a person, me or somebody in my position, to get on the phone and renegotiate right. with his subs. That was a really good thing to be allowed to. So no, just make sure really it's very clear, everybody. There are three components. There's the component for Delano Construction, which is 205000 mm -hmm. The second component is the insurance component, which is 30 some odd thousand dollars. And that really relates to the fact that the insurance um, coverage is being extended a length of time. For, to, to, in a significantly longer period of time. It's the additional insurance it's coverage. Insurance. Time. No, but the additional amount. The additional amount, amount. 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 right. right. Yeah. But that amount was, I'm sorry, but that's not clear because when Tony was, was given the contract, he took out the insurance at that point and he has since extended the period of time right. for that amount of money and insurance right. to remain in place. For that additional insurance, right. right. Third thing is the subcontractors and that's, that's about $45,000. Plus, yeah. plus approximately 10%, which I failed to say earlier, about 10% in the overhead and profit, which goes $4, on. $4,000. So. <laughs> <laughs> so those, those, those are the three components. Um, what, what we've wrestled with as a board is A, getting that number down to as low a number as we possibly can, and then dealing with what are our options. And I think Steve said it very well, our options are to kiss Tony goodbye and start the process all over again, um, which will lead to very lengthy delays. And we feel that the costs at that point are simply going to go up again because we're going to be dealing at a, a later point in time. Um, Stephen, you weren't at... The, the budget meeting that was hosted by Stephen, I guess earlier in January, but a, a, a woman stood up, a professional, and I saw it on tape. Okay, and her question was, when can I have my boss here for dinner? Because I'm embarrassed the way this place looks. You know what? I feel exactly the same way. I'm a homeowner I as feel well, the same way too, and I can't stand walking into this place and looking at the way it looks. I want it done, right. and I certainly, as a homeowner, don't want to pay any more money per month, or pay any more money to Tony than I need to. But guess what? It's the reality of it. And we are, we, nobody's sitting here happily saying, okay, we're going to write a, you know, we're going to agree to a $288,000 increase. But there are issues here that we have been confronted with. Nobody expected the town to have a 90 day delay. We all sat here saying, when are we getting the permits? You know, when we were going through it, sitting here from meeting to meeting, I don't know if we realized just how severe the problem was becoming. It was building. We couldn't anticipate it. But here we are. Tony, if, if if we start this project now, seriously, that you are able, can we cap this um, overage we have, we amount? Have a, we have a lump sum amount. Uh, that's not the question. What happens?